Good morning to you. Um, hello, welcome back to the Penrose Knits YouTube channel. Something a little bit different today. I was meant to be filming a podcast today, but life has well and truly got in the way and I don't think I'm going to have time to spend two hours doing that. So I thought instead I'd have a little go at vlogging. Oh, I've been watching a lot of the crazy sock lady vlogmas. I've been like going back through all the old years and I just really enjoy watching what she gets up to on like a normal day. So there might be some knitting, there should be some knitting involved, but I'm going to be running some errands in town. I've got some house stuff to do. The kids are at nursery today. So I thought I would bring you along with me. So let's go. I've just popped into Leamington Spa, my local town, and I've got to pick up my husband's birthday present. My husband is in Sweden at the moment on a business trip um and it was his birthday yesterday so i need to get him a present for when he comes home tomorrow <laughs> um and yeah just lots and lots of little things to do today that have just kind of like all built up um a lot of stuff i was supposed to do yesterday but i was having my hair done don't know if you can tell i've gone a bit blonde <laughs> and it took four hours so that kind of like and considering my nursery um my kids are at nursery for five hours on a Wednesday and my hair took four hours and half an hour to get there and half an hour to get back. So yeah, didn't even with much spare time. So anyway, let's stop jabbering on and let's go and do some life stuff. And before we go, this is my school run hat. It is the pattern by yours truly available on Ravelry now. I will put it in the description box below. I think it really goes with my new hair colour. I was a little bit like changing my hair colour from like a medium dark brown to like a lighter brown blonde. It was a bit like, I think it's still going to suit me, but I feel, I feel like it works well. I think it works well. Anyway, let's go! My plan for my husband is to get him a little sketchbook and put like the date on every single page. It's, I really feel really sorry for my husband sometimes because he doesn't have like a portable hobby like I do. He also finds it really difficult to switch off. So I thought, if I get him just a little sketchbook, because he's an artist, Soz, but because it's also his job, he doesn't really do it for pleasure anymore. So I'll get him a little sketchbook and I can write the date on every page and like a little prompt and little messages. When he's like sat on the train on the way to work, that kind of stuff, he can just pull it out and just do like a little sketch to kind of encourage him to get back in touch with his like creative side and just to give him like a little, a little mindfulness hobby, like how I've got knitting. So that's the plan. And I'm also gonna pop to my favorite, favorite shop in Leamington. It's called Berry Loon. And they've got a website as well. So if you're in the UK, check out berryloon.co.uk. If you ever need to get a present for someone, but you don't know what to get, you know, I just walk into their shop and it's like, boom, that'll do. Honestly, the most beautiful curation of nice things <laughs> and i'll probably get him a plant as well we are definitely plant people so that's always fun i tend to usually get him like a book and a plant and a thing i have been making him some socks but i'm really behind on them i'll show you them later when i get home but yeah i try to make life easier for myself by doing dk socks i've actually made my life harder and you'll see why later I am done. I uh, managed to get a book for my husband about pies. <laughs> and pies are his favourite thing in the world. I also got my sketchbook, but it's quite little, which is what I wanted, but it felt a bit like, mm, this isn't very much of a cousin. So I got him a book about pies as well, and I'll get him a little something from the kids as well. So yeah, I think I'm done in town now, thankfully. Just got to knit to the big shop, and then we're done. I also picked myself up some knitwear. I don't normally buy knitwear because I see it and I'm like, I can't buy it because I could make it but I wanted a knitted dress I'm sorry but I'm just not gonna put the time into knitting a whole dress because like if I did it in thick yarn to make it quicker it would be too heavy but if I did it in fingering to make it lighter then it would take ages so I got this kind of like knitted dress from H&M and it's got major like nighty vibes 
like it looks like I'm going to wear it to bed. So I'm going to try it on with some stuff at home to see if I can get rid of that nighty vibe. Maybe like a belt or something. But if not, it's going to be like the most comfortable loungewear in the world. just got this little fella for my husband and um, we basically got into the um kind of habit of for like birthdays and stuff it's like book on a plant and then something fun <laughs> um this guy was two pounds reduced from nine pounds in home base i don't know why i saw a lady putting new stock of this guy out but this one has got like brand new growth in the middle absolute bargain i've got a little pot for it to go into as well though it's a little bit short so i might trim the plastic pot down a bit but yeah look at that guy it's called a croton don't really know anything about it other than it doesn't like direct sunlight so that's good because we have got some shadier spots in the house that are currently plantless so yeah what a bargain winner i've made it home and i've got a little bit of life admin to do now i'm wearing my nighty dress and even though it's definitely giving me nighty vibes, like I really like it and don't want to take it off, so I don't think I'm gonna. Um, I need to put some parcels together. I need to do a big trip to the post office. I need to post the strawberry pickle kale prizes because I'm majorly behind on that. Sorry, guys. I just really struggled to get to the post office. Um, I need to send some things back that I ordered that I didn't want. Yeah, boring life stuff. And then I'm hopefully going to sit down and try and finish the first sock of my husband's birthday socks, which I'll show you now. Sorry for the weird angle. You're like propped up on a cushion. Um, so here are the socks that I'm making for my husband for his birthday. And it's a one by one broken rib. I don't know how well you can see that. Yeah, one by one broken rib with a heel flap and gusset and my thought was if I do a DK weight sock it'll be much quicker and I'll be able to get them done in three days but actually finding it's I probably would have been quicker to do like a four ply in self striping where I had nothing else to do um, a few reasons why it's a bit of a pain the yarn management for this is taking up time and it's totally my fault because I'm using my jar yarvol 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 that I was gifted from Knit and Living. And because I'm holding it double, I'm having to pull from the outside of each ball because I can't pull from the centre. And I think that's to do with the little extra strand you get to enforce heels and toes. Because I've got four of those on the go and every other row I have to twist them because I don't want to have to weave in the ends every single time, but I don't want any long floats between stripes because you can like easily catch your toes on them. So I'm having to twist like, every other row and it's taking up loads of time they're on 3.25 millimeter needles and i think i probably should have used the 3.5 because the gauge is so tight it's like taxing on my hands and i can't just sit and bosh a load out because my hands get sore i also did the heel like literally four times so i originally did a shadow wrap heel um but i forgot to add in the extra reinforcement strand that you get with jar yarvel so I ripped it back and put it in, but then the gauge was so tight, I could barely work the stitches. So I ripped it back and then went up a needle size, but then the heel was all poofy. So I ripped it back and then took the extra strand out and then just decided to do a heel flap and turn, which I should have done in the first place, but I didn't really know how the stripes were going to work. But then I thought, hang on, a, hang on a wee minute here. I recently bought a Summerly Knit sock collection. I can't remember what the collection's called, but it's like seaside themed. And in it was a one by one fisherman rib sock. And I was like, oh, so I found it in my Ravelry and there's a fingering weight and a DK weight. And the DK weight had the same stitch count that I did for these. I just did 44 stitches because that's like what I do for myself for a DK sock. And my husband's feet are like pretty much the same circumference. His are just longer than mine. So I can like make sure it fits my foot and then just knit it a little bit longer. Um, so, and in it, she does the heel flap and turn. And in the fingering weight version, the stripes go over the gusset. Though in the DK version, it doesn't have stripes. Also, it doesn't have like a one by one, normal one by one cuff like I've done. It's just the fisherman ribs, rib has gone all the way up. So from kind of like 
all this was just in my head and then from the heel down it's been that pattern um so yeah i think if i'd just instead of rushing into something if i'd like thought ahead a little bit i probably could have planned this a little bit better and i am still tempted to put these down and save them for a christmas present for someone and cast on a pair of um fingering weight socks in my west yorkshire spinners self-striping because i feel like i could knit two socks like that in two days potentially if i just did a tube and then an afterthought heel i feel like i could do that a lot quicker because it's a lot easier on my hands also these needles that i'm using one of the joins has got a little like these are the knit pro nova interchangeables and one of them just keeps coming undone no matter how much i try i can't undo it now <laughs> no matter how much i try and tighten it one of them just keeps coming undone so it keeps catching every time I try and pull it through so it's like these socks are just saying no stop working on me and then i'm like maybe i should just not put the pressure on myself and not knit him anything for his birthday i did just knit him a hat i gave it him as like a little going away present when he went to sweden because it's going to be cold um so i'm just kind of like I have to knit him something why am i stressing myself out over getting him some socks done he is back late friday night and it's thursday afternoon now i could knit for the rest of today the rest of this evening and all of tomorrow because the kids have been at nursery two days in a row on friday they're just going to want to chill they're just going to want to relax at home and not do anything like major so it will just be a day at home anyway. So I've either got to just commit and finish those or cast on a new pair and accept the fact that they might not be done in time. We'll see, we'll see what happens with that. Anyway, back to, back to stuff. All the lighting in here is the one. I also need to point out that this is my third eggnog latte in a row. I've had one three days in a row. They're just, they're so magical. I'd never tried one before. And then the other day I was in Starbucks and I was like, okay, let's give it a go. And I'm obsessed. They're really thick and creamy and just, oh, if you haven't tried one yet, I highly recommend. So I'm gonna smash this down whilst I get my parcels ready. have a post office in our village but the opening times are like really dodgy and it shut for a little while but it's open again now so hopefully there's somebody on the counter and I can drop off all my parcels do you ever find yourself putting jobs off like really simple easy jobs but just find excuses not to do them I'm definitely that kind of person <laughs> right I've been to the post office um and my other little fun task for today was we have been given an empty jar by the kids nursery to fill with something to give away not to give away to win at the like I think it's like the Christmas fair to raise money for the for the nursery basically it's a it's a charity run nursery oh yeah so it's the Christmas market on the 27th of November oh exciting um and they just said to like, you know, fill it with like sweets or whatever. But I thought, no, let's get a bit more imaginative than that. And I don't know if the idea is I'm supposed to do it with kids. But no, my kids, that's just more hassle than it's work. So excuse the rustling. I was in the works just to pick up some more paper for the kids. And I saw this, like pom-pom Christmas characters. And it comes with everything you need. So I just thought I'd take it out of the packet and put the instructions in and some little chocolate coins. And wouldn't that be like a much nicer thing 
to like to get to win in your little tombola. So yeah, I'm gonna put that together now, I think. That was easy. The jar is quite big, like quite tall, so I put like a little bit of like shredded paper stuff in there. The instructions and I cut out like the name from the packaging so people see what it is. And then you can see like all the little bits and pieces and some chocolate coins. I'd see that and be like, oh yeah, I'll have that one please. So hopefully that will make somebody happy. It was quite fun. I did think about doing um buying some pom-pom basically doing this kind of thing but buying a set of pom-pom makers and like taking one of them out because I mean I always need pom-pom makers um and putting that in there with some yarn and some googly eyes but then I thought well, I'm gonna have to make some instructions and I thought nah I can't be honest I'll just buy something ready-made so I think for a grand total of three pounds I've done pretty good Oh, I might put like a tea in it as well. Oh yes, I'm going to put a little packet of tea. I don't have any Christmassy tea, but I have got chocolate, rubos and vanilla tea. That's quite festive, isn't it? So then when the parents are like, okay, let's do the pom-pom thing then, they can be like, ooh, a cup of tea. Boop. Next up is, oh sorry, you're a bit wobbly. You're on a, like a bendy arm thing. Um, next up is my husband's sketchbook. I got this guy from Paper Chase. It's ten pounds. It was a little bit expensive, in my opinion. Um, but it's like a nice hardcover, smooth. So we'll like withstand going in and out of his bag. And it's just just little sheets of plain, nice quality paper, so that when he's on. When he's on the train on the way to work, he can just put his pen out and be like, I'm just going to do a little picture. And I was going to like write the date on every single page, but I didn't want him to feel like he has to do it every single day if he doesn't want to. So I might just put a little note in the front that's like, oh, I don't know. I'm not really good with writing these like mushy little things. Let's see. So I've written, <clears throat> use this book to find little moments of creativity and mindfulness in your day. Draw what you see, write lyrics and thoughts, or just jot down that thing you need to remember. Treat it as your own portable hobby. Happy birthday. I hope he, I hope he does it because he's a sucker for looking at his phone a lot and quite often if I'm sat on the sofa knitting away whilst we're watching telly or something, I feel a bit sorry for him that he hasn't got a creative outlet at the moment. So hopefully this will spur that on. We've got plans. Um, we're celebrating his birthday on Saturday. Um, and in the day, we're going to go and do some plein air painting, which is just like the French word for painting outside. Um, my husband's going to do some like oils or something. But I might just take like some fine liners or some... Um, pastels or something like I'm, I'm obviously a creative person but I've always struggled with things like painting like I can't make things look real and that would always like frustrate me but I obviously it's not just about making it real so I'm hoping if I go out there with Ben and relax into it and let him guide me a little bit it would be a really fun thing for us to do as a couple on his birthday well on the day we celebrate his birthday and then we go for a meal and then we go to the pub Okay, so I've got two hours now until I pick the kids up from nursery. Technically long enough to film a podcast, but I know whenever I try and film a podcast under a time pressure, then I, first of all, don't enjoy it as much. Second of all, like I make a lot more mistakes, which makes um, editing a lot harder and longer. And I just like, I can't settle into it. I can't relax into it. So I'm constantly like, how long has it been? How long has it been? So I'm not going to film the podcast today. But hopefully I'll be able to, you know, release this little vlog before then. And then if I don't have time to podcast on Saturday, it will be next week. So, yeah, I'm going to, I've decided I'm going to finish this sock. If I can finish this sock in these two hours I've got now and before I pick the kids up, then I'm like, I'm confident I can knit the other one before my husband gets home tomorrow night. I spent obviously quite a lot 
of time on the heel and figuring things out in this sock, which I won't have to do next time round. I can just do it. And I really think he's gonna like them. Um, I went for a rib because then I don't really have to worry about the fit too much. Um, and we've got similar size feet anyway. But yeah, I think <laughs> if I wasn't under such a time pressure, I definitely enjoy these a lot more because I really enjoy rib, especially broken rib. I love the look of it. And I really like that you can put stripes in it, but without that awkward little kind of like bit where the legs of the bottom stitch is one color and the pearl bump of the next stitch above is another color. Like I don't particularly like the look of that, but with this, because you've got the row of knit in between, you don't have any of those awkward jolts. So I'm probably going to do the four ply version for my sister's Christmas socks. And I might do the same for my mum because last year I made them the same socks in the same colour. But I started them quite early in the year. So I had I wasn't bored of the pattern when I came back to do it a second time. Um, but that sock pattern collection, as I said by Semolina, it's got quite a few really lovely ones. It's got a, jump, uh, a jumper, a sock pattern that's based on like a Gansey jumper that's got a really lovely cable on it. So I might do that for my mum, but in some dark sock yarn. I think I've got some purple sock yarn somewhere. And my mum really likes purple, so I might do that. And then something a bit more funky for my sister. I really like the colours that Summerlene Knits uses. It's always kind of like a neutral with a, with a really vibrant pop. And she's really brave with her colour choices. And it's quite inspiring. I don't have the most exciting sock yarns in my stash. But I actually, I do have a 10 gram mini that I got that um, was sent to me from um, Wool Bath when I ordered their t-shirt, but it got delayed, so they sent me a little mini skein. And that is like a bright, hot pink speckled guy. So that could look really fun as like the stripe against like a neutral white or a gray, maybe. That would be fun, I think my sister would like that. Oh, I'm getting excited now. The, I'm like, I'm, I kind of really wish that I could really just dive into my Christmas knitting now, because I'm really starting to feel like I want to do some gift knitting. But I've got my, I'm still working on my chest knit for hive knits, the first sweater, and I'm just finishing the body now. I don't think the sleeves are gonna take me too long. Because they're half fisherman's rib, they grow a lot. So you don't actually have to knit a full length sleeve. You only knit it to like here. And then when you block it, it stretches out. Um, there's a lot of kind of like umming and ahhing on the group chat about how long to do sleeves. Some people are doing them longer. I think I'm gonna do them exactly to pattern, just because I know that that will be easier for me because I won't have to figure out how much extra yarn I've used because obviously for the test knit, Lizzie needs to know how much yarn you use per size as per the pattern. So I think I'm just going to stick to the pattern because um, then I can just weigh the thing at the end or weigh my yarn and get all the accurate information for her. And then if they are too short, I just have to rip the cuff back and do it, do it, make it a little bit longer. Like it's not, not a big thing. They're also kind of poofy sleeves so I don't like them to be too long anyway she says with these going on I wore my little jumper dress to the shop put a little pair of tights on and some boots and it felt less like nighty ish and I'm very very much enjoying it and I think you're going to see me wearing this a lot it's from H&M by the way I think it was 25 pounds maybe do you know what I've probably still got the label in it yeah I guess I do oh yes 24.99 and I think this is going to be a a staple for me one day. Maybe I will need to dress one day. No kidding. I'm going to put a Christmas movie on and crack on with these stuff. So I've reached the point when I would normally start doing the toe if it was for myself. So when the when the foot basically comes to the end of your pinky, I might have done another row or two. Um, that's when I start doing the toe. Because this is for my husband, I'm going to finish this blue stripe and do one more orange stripe and then do the toe. So it looks like I'm going to be done before I go to nursery, although I've got 20 minutes until I have to leave. So we'll see. Can I do a toe in 20 minutes? Daddy pig! So it's time to go and get the kids from nursery and I nearly, nearly finished. I've just got like maybe three, two or three decreases to go till I finish the toe. So close, but I think I stand a good chance of getting the second one finished by 
tomorrow night if I crack on with it when the kids get home. So I'm gonna go and pick up my babies, I miss them. traffic this time of day because everyone's coming to pick their kids up from school. Um, just wanted to talk for a little minute about something that I've trying to do a little bit more of recently. It's something that was really, really important to me when I first entered recovery for my eating disorders. I'm in a really good place with that all now, but I do sometimes find myself kind of slipping into um, old behaviours. And something that I find really, really helpful still is to take two minutes when I eat and drink to actually be mindful, think about what I'm eating and drinking, to look at my surroundings. Fortunately I've got a lot of access to the outdoors and I can just nip outside and still see the kids in the living room and just <laughs> so many cars. <laughs> just look at the field for a minute whilst I drink a coffee and just take a minute. I find that really really useful and something I don't do enough of. Jeff is playing with his cars and Penny's having half an hour of screen time. Um, she gets quite tired at this point of the day and if she sleeps now it can ruin bedtime. So she'll quite often just want to like sit and chill out for a little while. So she's watching a bit of Peppa Pig. I'm going to finish this toe and then make, oh, I dipped it in my coffee, and make the tea. Um, kids are having sausages tonight so I might, um, I might join them and eat at the same time as them. And then when they go to bed, I can just sit down and bosh out sock number two. is 7 30 and both the kids are in bed and i don't think they're quite asleep yet but i don't think it'll be far off it's been quite a long evening penny is very tired she's not used to doing two days in a row at nursery so she didn't want to eat a tea she didn't want to have a bath didn't want to go to bed but it's been quiet for a few minutes now so i'm hopeful um i've really enjoyed vlogging today even though i've basically been on my own and not really spoken to any of the adults today i felt like i've had a bit of company which is really 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 nice so i'm probably just going to spend the rest of the evening doing a little bit of knitting i'm very very tired i haven't had the best night's sleep the past few nights so i'll probably only be up for another hour or two but if i go to bed early then i'll get up early so i can knit in the morning um so i'm gonna sign off here thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed it let me know in the comments obviously this is the first time i've done anything like this and if it's not a goer i won't do any more but if you guys enjoyed it then i will do it again because i enjoy it so thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time good night <laughs>